Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I show you how to make a modern off-the-shoulder sweater. Went into this thinking New Year's Eve party and ran with that theme. We've got clean lines, an ever so slight sweetheart neckline for a flirty vibe, and straps to keep your sweater up when you're getting down. Speaking of, if you're getting down and fun crochet fits, you've come to the right place. We've got hundreds of designs, perfect for any vibe or occasion, with even more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so we can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 500 grams of yarn, that's 1,200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what foods you eat to bring in the new year. There's a few for us, but one is a spoonful of black eyed peas. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain that reaches from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. Now, I need mine to be just about 15 inches or 38 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 60. Now that we have our chain, we're going to work on our row 1, which is going to be a double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain, and we're going to do a chain 3. Now that chain 3 doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And from here we're going to yarn over, and insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook. So bring our hook down, and into that fourth chain insert your hook. Once we have those first three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop. Should have two loops, so yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. There's our first double crochet, let's just do one more. Yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. Continue to put one double crochet into every chain until we have one chain left. So I've just made my way all the way down with my first double crochet row, and I have left my last chain. Now together, we're gonna to be putting two double crochets into that last chain, and that's gonna be our increase. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that last chain with just one double crochet, and then one more double crochet into that same last chain. Alright, and that is our increase. Our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, so chain one and flip your work. And when it comes to doing our back loop slip stitches, the best way to do it is insert your hook into that first stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And when you pull through everything, make sure you're not tugging too tightly on the working yarn, otherwise the falling row is going to be really difficult to work into, so let's do the next one. Into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and then move on. Next back loop, yarn over, and pull through. Next back loop, yarn over, and pull through. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row, our following row is going to be a back loop double crochet row, so let's get that started. Start with a chain 3 to start every double crochet row. After that, flip our work, and then we're going to yarn over preparing for a double crochet. We're going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous rows, back loop, pull through, pull through 2, pull through 2. That is our first back loop double crochet, let's do this again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, 
pull through two, and pull through two. And that's it. We're going to be putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that we can increase together once more. So I've made my way all the way up with my back loop double crochets, left the last stitch, and all we're going to do here is increase together. So yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitches, back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then one more double crochet into that same back loop. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. Now for this section, our slip stitches don't have any increases or decreases, so just chain one, flip our work, and do our back loop slip stitch row. And from here, we're going to continue to repeat our back loop double crochet row and our back loop slip stitch row until this can reach from mid underarm to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we meet back right after a slip stitch row. And a really quick tip that I have for you guys is make sure that once we're putting this up to ourselves, we are stretching it as if we're wearing it because the body is going to be fitted. Go ahead, get this portion all finished up, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I'm back with the first half of my underarm portion. I have a total of four rows and my width is just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. Now I have to do just a little bit more increasing for this underarm portion, just so we have a really smooth curve all the way up to the shoulder. So what we're gonna do next, since we all should have ended on our back loop slip stitch row, is put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch again, because now we're gonna be doing an increase of three double crochets. So we've made our way all the way up with our back loop double crochet row. Into that last stitch, we're now gonna be doing an increase of three. So yarn over, insert your hook into that last back loop with our first double crochet, into that same back loop with our second double crochet, and then into that same back loop with our third double crochet. And now from here, we do need to be increasing into our slip stitch row as well. So how we're gonna increase there we start with a chain two. There's one, there's two. That first chain that we made is gonna count as a stitch, and that second chain that we made is gonna count as our turning stitch. After our chain two, go ahead and flip your work, and start by inserting your hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So we're gonna skip this chain into that following chain's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch the same way that we have been doing. Now from here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows. A back loop double crochet row that ends on an increase of three back loop double crochets, and then a back loop slip stitch row with an increase as well. We're gonna keep repeating these two rows until this can stretch from mid underarm to the front of our body, making sure that we meet back right after a double crochet row. All right, so I'm back with my underarm portion. My total width is about two and a half inches or six centimeters, and I have a total of seven rows. And since we all should have ended along the top, we're going to make an odd number chain that reaches about an inch underneath the top of our shoulder. So I've already measured mine out. I need about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 15. And now that we have our chain, the following row in a row sequence is a back loop slip stitch row. So to get that started, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert, yarn over, and pull through everything to do our first slip stitch. And then from here, we're going to put one slip stitch into every chain, and then once we reach the body portion, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And at the end of that row, we're gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch leaving the last two so that we can decrease together. All right, so I'm back and I've just made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row and then all the way back up with my back loop double crochet row leaving the last two stitches and now we're gonna do a decrease. So starting with the yarn over, we're gonna insert our hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over and pull through. Also insert your hook into that last back loop, yarn over and pull through. Should have four loops on our hook. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull through three to get two loops on our hook, and then yarn over, pull through two. And that's how we do our decrease of two back loop double crochets. And now from here, the next row in our row sequence is a back loop slip stitch row, so chain one and flip your work. 
and then make our way down putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here we're going to continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop double crochet row that ends with a decrease of two and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until this portion that we have can stretch over from mid underarm over to the middle of our chest making sure that we end right after a double crochet row. And I'll meet you guys back once we have the first half of our front panel all finished up. I am back and the first half of my front panel is all finished. I have a total of 19 rows and my width is just about 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters. I did end on a back loop double crochet row and now we're just going to do our middle row together which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases so pretty much the same way that we've been doing them. So from here all we're going to do is start with a chain one, flip our work and then make our way all the way down putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And at the end of the row we are going to get started on the other half of our front panel so start by putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch leaving the last stitch so that we can do an increase together. All right, so I've just made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row and then all the way back up with my back loop double crochet row, leaving the last stitch. And all we're gonna do is do an increase of two into that last stitch together. So yarn over and then into that last stitch, insert with one double crochet, and then also into that last stitch, our second double crochet. Now from here, the next row is gonna be a back loop slip stitch row. So we're just going to keep repeating these two rows. So back loop double crochet row, that ends on an increase of two back loop double crochets, and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have on this side for our front panel, not including that middle row. I'll meet you guys back when we have this all finished up, and then we can get started on the other side's underarm. All right, so I'm back with the increased side of my neckline. I do have the same amount of rows as my decreased side, not including my middle row. Now from here, we're going to be doing our underarm. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made along this side. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total of 15 chains over here. So along this end, I counted down 15 stitches and then inserted my stitch marker. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the bottom right after a back loop slip stitch row, we're gonna chain three and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch leaving three stitches right before a stitch marker, and then I'll meet you back so we can do a decrease of three together. All right, so we have made our way all the way up with our back loop double crochets, and we have one, two, three stitches right before a stitch marker. So now let's do a decrease of three double crochets. Starting with the yarn over, we are gonna insert our hook into that third to last back loop, yarn over, pull through. Into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through and then also into that last back loop and pull through. Now once we have all five of those loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first four loops to get two loops on our hook and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two. Now the underarm portions need to mirror each other. So since on the other underarm portion, we did an increase of two for the slip stitches. So for the other side of the underarm portion, we did an increase into the slip stitch row, so we're going to need to do a decrease into the slip stitch row as well. So to get the slip stitch row started, chain one and flip your work. To do our decrease, we're going to be inserting our hook into that first stitches back loop, pull through. Also insert your hook into that second stitches back loop, and then once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And from here, continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then at the end of this row, do a chain three, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches because I want to decrease with you guys once more. So I've made my way down with my back loop slip stitch row that started with a decrease of two, worked my way back up with a back loop double crochet row, leaving the last three so we can decrease together once more. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, that second to last back loop, pull through, and then that last back loop and pull through. Again, we should have five loops on our hook. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through the first four loops. Yarn over and then pull through two. Now from here, we're gonna continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two, and then a back loop double crochet row that ends on a decrease of three for the same amount of rows that we have for the second half of our underarm portion on the other side. So I'm actually finished up 
doing this side of my decreases. And now we're going to do the second half of the decreases, where now we're going to do a decrease of two into the double crochet row and then no decreases into the slip stitch rows. So once when the section is finished up for everyone, we should end on a double crochet row. So all we're gonna do is chain one, pull up our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, no increases and no decreases. And at the end of the row, chain three, flip our work and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two, just so we can do a decrease of two together once more. All right, so I made my way all the way up with my back loop double crochet rows, leaving the last two, so now we can do a decrease of two together. So to get this started, we're gonna yarn over and insert your hook into that second to last back loop and pull through into that last back loop, pull through. Once we have four loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first three, yarn over, and then pull through two. And then from here, chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. And from here, just keep repeating these two rows. So back loop double crochet row that ends with a decrease of two and then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our underarm portion and then do a chain up of one and cut. I'll meet you guys back once I have mine all finished up. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the second half of my underarm portion for my front panel. I did do a chain up of one and cut and now we are finished with the entirety of the front. Now, to get started on the back, it's gonna be done pretty much the exact same way that we did the front. And the only difference is that once we're working across our back, we aren't gonna have any of these decreases or increases. So to start off by making the same chain as the front panel, do the same amount of rows for our underarm with the same types of increases, and then we're gonna make the same chain that we did, reaching all the way up till we're about an inch to our shoulder. Now I have the entirety of my back panel all finished up, so I'm just gonna show you guys what it's gonna look like when we work straight across. Now this is my back panel. As you guys can see, I have the same underarm and I made the chain. From here, instead of doing some increases and decreases for the neckline, we've just worked straight across for the same amount of rows as the front panel, and then ended it off with the same underarm portion that we did for the front. So go ahead and get your back panel all finished up, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. All right, so now that our front and back panel are all finished up, next thing we're gonna do is seam our sides. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure the work is flipped right side out. And by right side out, I mean the ribbing that we have for the front and the ribbing that we have for the back is along the outside. What we're gonna do from here is insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's get that started. What we're gonna do is find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. And then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and only insert into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Now there's our first outside loop slip stitch seam, let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only into that front loop. And then next stitch into the back panel, only insert through that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do just one more. Next stitch, insert only into the front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, only insert into that back, yarn over and pull through everything. And we're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And then once we have that, do a chain up we wanna cut and repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seen together, the next thing we're going to start working on is our sleeve. So first we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and that we're looking at the front panel. Next thing we're going to do is insert our hook into the last stitch from our side seam. Insert your yarn onto your hook and pull through. Now from here, what we're going to do is single crochet all the way up and we're going to make a chain across to the back panel and then all the way back down. So we should have a few side rows to work into. We're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side double crochet, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's get that started. Start by finding that first side row. It should be a side double crochet row. We're gonna find that top loop and insert our hook into there with two single crochets. So here's my first one. 
and then into that same side loop, just like that with my second single crochet. Now that we have our two single crochets, our next single crochet is gonna be worked into that side slip stitch row. So find that top loop and single crochet just once and do this again. So into the next side double crochet, insert your hook into that top loop with one and then into that same top loop with our second single crochet and then into that top slip stitch loop insert your hook into there with just one and we're going to continue to do this until we reach our shoulder portion and then once we reach our shoulder portion we have some regular stitches to work into so I'll put one single crochet into every stitch until I reach the top corner stitch of the front panel all right so we've just single crocheted our way all the way up to the corner of our front panel from here we're going to try on our piece and then we're going to make a chain that reaches around our shoulder that can connect to the back panel. Now this is going to be the strap that holds our front and back panel together so you want to make sure that this is taut but not too tight. And this chain is going to need to be made in multiples of three but once we have that multiple of three we're going to subtract one. So as an example I measured out three and a half inches or nine centimeters which was a total of 18 chains. That's in multiples of three. I'm going to subtract one and that's going to be 17 for me. So I'm going to make my chain of 17. Now that I have my chain, I have flipped my work and then into the top corner stitch of my back panel, I'm going to insert my hook with one single crochet and that is gonna be how we connect it. So there's one. And then from here, we're going to continue to put one single crochet into every stitch. Once we're into the tops of our side rows, two single crochets into every side double, one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, and then we're gonna slip stitch into that chain space and then I will meet you back. All right, so we just finished up our first single crochet row and have slip stitched into that chain space. Now we're gonna be doing another single crochet row just to make our chain a little bit more sturdy. So all we're gonna do after our slip stitch is chain one and then we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch. And I will meet you back once we reach the last stitch right before our chain. All right, so I have the single crocheted my way all the way up until I reach my last stitch right before my chain. I've inserted my stitch marker into there just so I know where this portion ends. And the next thing we're gonna do is just put one single crochet into every chain, making our way all the way across. And then when you do your single crochet into the first stitch right after our chain, put one stitch marker into there as well and then continue to put one single crochet into every stitch while making a slip stitch into that chain space. I'll meet you guys back once we have this second row all finished up and then we can start working on the sleeve length. All right, so now that we've made our way around with our second single crochet row, making sure that our stitch markers are into the correct spots, we can now make a chain the length that we want our sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a cuff. So I want this to be a long sleeve so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 15 inches or 38 centimeters. That's going to be a chain of 60. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna be doing a double crochet row back. So block off that last chain and do a chain three. Now that chain three doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain and we want the height. From here, we're gonna yarn over preparing for a double crochet. And then we're gonna double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that chain, insert your hook with one double crochet and continue to put one double crochet into every chain until we have one left. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our double crochets except for into that last chain and into that last chain, we're gonna do an increase of two. So all that is is yarning over once and then inserting into that last chain with one double crochet and then also into that same last chain with a second double crochet, just like that. We are gonna need to connect it into the base. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out and right side up, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the base, going clockwise or to the left. So what we're gonna do is just find that next available stitch into the base. This is mine right here. And insert with a slip stitch to connect that first row. Now our following row is going to be a slip stitch row that's in the back loops, but with no increases and no decreases. 
So we are going to need to slip stitch up that next available stitch into the base and flip our work and make our way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So now that we put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, our next row is going to be a back loop double crochet row with an increase of two into that last stitch. So just to get this row started, we're going to chain three, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. Leave the last one so we can increase together once more. So we made our way all the way up with our back loop double crochet row. We left that last stitch and we're just going to increase together once more. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitch's back loop with one double crochet and then into that same last back loop with our second double crochet. And from there we need to connect it into the base. So just find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to close off this row. And then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up that next stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, we're just going to keep repeating these two rows, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. We are going to work into that stitch marker, so we should end on a slip stitch row. And I'll meet you guys back so I can show you guys how we're going to work across our chain. So I've made my way all the way up to my stitch marker. The last row that we all should have ended on should have been a back loop slip stitch row. So the next thing we're going to do is work across our chain. But working across our chain, we aren't going to have any increases or decreases. So start by doing a chain three and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, including into that last stitch. And then I will meet you guys back once we're at the base because we'll be connecting it a little bit differently. All right, so we put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. And now we're ready to get started to connect it to the first portion of our chain. So connecting the double crochet, we're going to need to count up the next two available stitches into the base. So the last stitch that we should have worked into should have been our stitch marker stitch. So right after that, we're going to count one, count two. Into that second stitch, go ahead and insert with a slip stitch to connect it. And then the slip stitch row will be the same. So slip stitch up that next available stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then repeat. So just continue to repeat our two rows of back loop double crochets and back loop slip stitches with no increases and no decreases, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did until we reach our stitch marker over here. We will end at the stitch right before the stitch marker, so it should end on a double crochet row, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so we are back and we have just made our way all the way around our chain. You should have all ended on a double crochet row right before our stitch marker stitch. Now from here, we're going to do our next slip stitch row. So just slip stitch into that stitch marker stitch, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from here, since we're working our way down our sleeve, we're going to do a decrease of two into the two stitches nearest to the base. So after that slip stitch row, chain three, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving two stitches right before the base. And I'll meet you back to show you how we're gonna decrease. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row, and then all the way back up with our back loop double crochet row, leaving the last two stitches, just so we can decrease together. So that's gonna start with the yarn over, and we're gonna insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then also into that last back loop, pull through. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first three loops, because we want two loops on our hook, and then yarn over, pull through two. That's how we do our decrease. And for this decrease half, we're going to be slip stitching into that next stitch into the base. So the same way that we connected the increase portion. So right after our stitch marker stitch, since our last slip stitch row should be worked into there, we're gonna find that following stitch and slip stitch it into there to connect this row. And just as a reminder, slip stitch up that following stitch into the base, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, just keep repeating those two rows. So back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop double crochet row that ends on a decrease of two back loop double crochets, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then I'll meet you back so we can seam our entire sleeve together. 
All right, so we've made our way all the way down with the decreased side of our sleeve and we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So from here, we're going to seam our sleeve together and that it's going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're all gonna to wanna to make sure that our sleeve is flipped right side out. Now this is going to be the same seam that we did for the sides. So let's just do the first one together. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and then insert our hook only in through that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. And then find that first available stitch into the back panel and insert your hook into that back loop. Insert your hook. And once we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and I will meet you back at the end of this row. I've just finished up seaming my sleeve and now we're going to get started on the cuff. So since we all should be along the end, all we're gonna do from here is chain one and then we're gonna single crochet along the bottom of our sleeve, but we do need it to cinch a little bit. So we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side double crochet skipping over the slip stitch row and then one single crochet into the side double crochet again. So all that's going to be is finding this first double crochet, insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet. Our next side row should be our side slip stitch so skip over that one and then into that next side double crochet, another single crochet. Skip the following side slip stitch row and then one single crochet into the following double crochet row. Continue to do this, making our way all the way around until we don't have any more stitches left. Slip stitch into that chain one space and then I'll meet you back. So now that we have just single crocheted along the entirety of the bottom of our sleeve, we can now get started on the length of our cuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is start by making a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I want mine to be just about six inches or 18 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 30. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain. Do a chain one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second from our hook. Insert our hook into that chain. We're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops on our hook. That is our first slip stitch. Let's do another. Insert your hook into that following chain. Yarn over, pull through everything. Into that following chain, insert and pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain but a quick tip that I have when it comes to doing our slip stitches is once we finish every stitch, make sure that we're not tugging too tightly. Otherwise, the falling rows are going to be really difficult to work into. I'll meet you back at the base. So now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we now need to connect it into the base. So how we're going to do that is find that next available stitch into the base. Insert your hook. Yarn over and pull through everything to connect this first row. And once we have that, we do need to work our way up to the next row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row now. So find that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Once we have that, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook into that first available stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, into that next available stitches back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Now we're gonna to continue to do this until we reach the end of the row. And now that we're at the end of our row two, our following row is going to be another back loop slip stitch row. So just chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And from here, we're just gonna to continue to repeat these two back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left. Then I'll meet you back so we can seam our cuffs together. All right, so I have just made my way all the way around with my cuff. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're just going to seam it. And the seam is gonna be another outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam as our sides. So let's get this started. We're gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Yarn over, pull through everything, and we're just going to do the first stitch since we already know how to do this one. So we're all gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert into that front loop. And then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop. When we have all three loops, yarn over and pull through everything. And that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And then once we have that, do a chain up one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. 
All right, so now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, the last thing that we're gonna have to do is single crochet along the top and our straps. So let's all start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and we're gonna be inserting our hook into any side row that we have along the back. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all I'm gonna do is put two single crochets into every side double crochet row, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, so let's just do the first set. I'm gonna insert my hook into that first side double crochet row that I have. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with one single crochet, and then into the top of that same side double crochet with our second single crochet. Now into the next side slip stitch row, I'm gonna insert my hook into the top of that row with one single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna to continue to repeat this, making our way all the way around. And just as a refresher, once we get on top of the shoulders, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into each of those stitches. Make your way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain one space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. So my single crochet row along the top of our piece is all finished up, and next we're gonna to have to do our straps. So I've already done one side, so I'm just gonna talk you guys through how we're gonna do the next. Now we're first gonna to need to insert our stitch markers into where we want the straps to be. Now I want these straps to be able to cover my bra straps, so I've actually just counted in about a half an inch right from where this corner is, where our sleeve starts, and then I insert my first stitch marker, and I want my strap to be just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. So for me, I counted out, including this first stitch marker stitch, seven stitches, and then inserted this next stitch marker. And once we have the front panel done, I did the same thing along the back, because we want to make sure that the strap goes directly up and over. And once we have that, we're going to do a single crochet row. So start by inserting your hook into your stitch marker stitch. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, I'm going to do a chain up of one to secure, and then from here I'm going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch, including into my stitch marker stitch. And after our first single crochet row, the rest of our rows are going to be back loop slip stitch rows. So chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one again, flip your work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we get the strap length that we want. And a really quick tip that I have for the stitch is just to make sure that we're not tugging too tightly right after every stitch, otherwise the following row will be really difficult to work into. And then a quick tip that I have for the strap is that since it's worked with back loop slip stitches, it is gonna have some stretch. So when we're figuring out how many rows to do for our strap, just make sure that we're pulling it up and over so that it's nice and taut, so that it's not too loose. But go ahead and get yours done, then I'll meet you guys back. So I am back with my strap. I have a total of 24 rows, and this is just about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters unstretched. And now we're ready to seam it. So how we're going to seam it is first off, make sure their work is still flipped right side out and that when we are folding this over, we're not twisting it in any way. So go ahead and fold it over and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the stitch marker stitch that we have along the back. So once when our strap is in through that stitch marker stitch, what we're going to do is just continue to fold our strap over so that our strap can be along the inside. So we're just going to sandwich it this way just going to tug this front portion off to the side and then we can single crochet across to our other stitch marker. So this is going to be a single crochet seam so let's get that started. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook to secure both of our panels together and then from here we're going to start by inserting our hook into the next available stitch into the front panel and then into the next available stitch into the back panel and then single crochet. Let's do the next. Insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel and that next stitch into the back panel and single crochet. And we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And now that my single crochet seam is all finished up, this is what it should look like. And once we have this one all finished up, we're going to do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up both of our straps and we are all done. So the last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. 
Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye!